This is the 100th anniversary of baseball's National League. An unforgettable sweep of time. And what you're about to see is by way of a birthday celebration. The centennial of a baseball league as old as 1876 and as new as today. as uniquely American as jazz and Thanksgiving. But as America has changed dramatically over the past hundred years, baseball in many ways has not changed at all. In a sense, baseball is our national resistance to future shock, a way to spend an afternoon or an evening away from an often confusing world, a way to cheer heroes in a time when heroes are lacking, a way to enjoy the present with an almost romantic link to the past. In fact, it's been a hundred-year love affair between generations of fans and players who have marched to the same drummer, the same tune. This program on the 100th anniversary of baseball's National League is brought to you by the Bell System, now celebrating 100 years of the telephone. One aspect of baseball has always been that one generation holds a mirror to another. This man, Ulysses S. Grant, was President of the United States in 1876, and that was the year of Custer's last stand. It was also the first year of baseball's National League, at a time when no community would think of equipping itself with anything but the most modern contributions to the art of playing the great national game. The press was there to cover the teams. Here is the account and box score of the National League's first game played in Philadelphia on April 22nd, 1876. That year's pennant winner had the star pitcher and batter of the time, Albert G. Spaulding and Cap Anson. But it was only the beginning of a parade of players, and over the years they would find themselves memorialized on the trading cards, the cigarette cards of the 1870s to the bubblegum cards of the 1970s. A game that comes full circle from the mustaches of yesterday to the mustaches of today. There were the scorecards of the old days. There would be teams that came and went. And oncoming stars like Wee Willie Keeler, whose motto was, hit them where they ain't. The coming of the 20th century would produce its own champions. They would include a pitcher with the best percentage for the most innings pitched, the legendary Christy Mathewson and a manager who led his team to 10 league titles, whose name was John McGraw. On the right, Pirate shortstop Honus Wagner. Branch Rickey called him the greatest player of all. For Boston, the Miracle Braves of 1914, who came from last place to sweep the World Series in four straight games. Before radio or television, there were flashboards so fans could follow games in progress. Always the crowds, over all the years. This is 1941. The Dodgers, managed by Leo DeRocher, and the fans slept all night outside the ballpark to get a ticket for the next day's game. Or pick the year 1926 and this parade for the St. Louis Cardinals, led by a pitcher named Grover Cleveland Alexander, who saved the World Series, then after the season went on to pitch for a barnstorming team that called itself the House of David. Bill Clem, finest of the umpires. I never called one wrong in my heart. Rogers Hornsby holds the greatest lifetime batting and slugging averages in National League history. 
and Mallott kicked his foot in the air and hit home runs like they were going out of style. Dizzy Dean and the Gas House Gang, and a left-handed pitcher named Carl Hubble, who in the 1934 All-Star Game struck out the five top sluggers of the American League, one after another, beginning with Babe Ruth. A spectacular moment, but it's a game of spectacular moments. This year, we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell was the kind of man who thought the present was never quite good enough, that it could always be improved upon. His own invention, the telephone, best represents that belief. In the first hundred years, it has grown from a curiosity to an instrument the entire world depends upon for its daily existence. At the Bell System, we take great pride in the accomplishments of yesterday and today. But tomorrow holds a greater challenge. And we look forward even more to the progress that can be made in the second hundred years of the telephone. The Bell System, nearly a million men and women working together with one common goal, to keep America's phone system the best in the world. days the fans could get there by subway and they still do it has always been the summer game the sky over Montreal the moon over st. Louis a fountain of splendor at Philadelphia a fountain of words at Chicago I don't know what you're doing. You went no, just sir. like that. I never, that I never gave any in indication. I announced him. I give no him. indication that he was in the game, was John. Right I did not. I haven't even made a move. I just sat there. Hit by the pitch. Yeah, it was a change. All right. Get on that base, Jimmy. Come on, we're getting some runs right here. You most certainly did. I looked right in there. there. No, I didn't. Why? I did not, John. No, I didn't. What do you think I did? No, I did not. There's a man right next to me knows I did. Right over there. I don't care what he said. I don't care. You pointed at me. No, I didn't. Why you? No, I didn't, John. That's not the truth. I did not, John. Kind of just taking the ball and throwing it, you know, without any intent. Just take a little hesitation and think about what you're going to do with the ball, right? Right now, nice double play ball. Yeah. You never fool him until he got to be 33 or 4 years old with uh, off-speed stuff. He's quick inside. We huh? got to get him looking away like an inbust him inside, you know, looking for something else. But give it. I did not give it to you! Turn around and give it to you! I didn't give it yes, to you! you no, sir, Shad, I did not do it! Turn. I told you! Somebody get one up in that wind before the night's over. It's just another day in the rest of your life. There's going to be more like this as you go through your career. Go get them right now. Just concentrate. Keep the ball down. You'll be all right. Okay. Because we're going to get some problems. We're going to get. It's early in the game. We're going to get Go right ball. after him. No, you're all right. You're yeah. all right? Yeah. All right, let's go. The magistrate of that unique magistrate, the umpire. Gotcha. Yes, you did. Pitches right at the knees on the outside corner. Now what else do you want? I can't take that away from him. Made a good pitch. There's another good pitch. Yeah, I tried to warn him, didn't he tell you? John, I never did it. Jim, you motion. No, I didn't. You well, I got my coach I don't know if you're looking at me. I got well, my coach, you too. Motion. I don't care. Yeah. I got just as many well, witnesses. I... No, I didn't, too, oh, John. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, They're all, all looking at you, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah! And the fans, all 
always the fans. Paul Gallico said, they play the role of Greek chorus to the actors on the field below. They reflect every action, every movement, every changing phase of the game. They moan, they jeer, and give great swelling murmurs of surprise and appreciation. The crowd lives the actions of the players more than in any other game. It is the next best thing to participation. And participation begins at home. Home is where the heart is. Home is where the catcher is. The welcome may vary ever so slightly from time to time, but the heartfelt sentiment behind it is unmistakable. Cincinnati, May 25th, 1935. Preparations are made. From 500 miles away in Washington, D.C., President Franklin D. Roosevelt pushes a button, and for the first time, Major League Baseball lights up the night. There would be other significant firsts. It was the National League that brought Major League Baseball to the Pacific Coast, and to the Southwest, and Deep South, and Canada. Before that, the National League already had broken the so-called color line with the coming of Jackie Robinson, the first black player. Robinson played first base in his first season in 1947 and led the Dodgers to a pennant in his rookie year. He was, among other things, in the tradition of the great base stealers Wagner and Max Carey. And in our own later time, the record breakers Maury Wills, 104 steals in 1962 and Lou Brock with 118 in 1974. Johnny Vandermeer, who pitched two successive no-hit, no-run games. And another left-hander, Sandy Koufax, who pitched four no-hitters in four years, the last of them a perfect game. Stan Musial, baseball's all-time leader in total bases and extra base hits. The immortal Roberto Clemente, a hero to baseball, yes but more than that, a hero to mankind. His contemporaries, like Johnny Bench, make the baseball headlines of today. Tom Seaver, who comes to break a record for batters struck out. And Pete Rose, here scoring the winning run in the 1970 All-Star Game. A slightly incredible man named Willie Mays makes his famous game-saving catch in the 1954 World Series. Moments like that have a way of multiplying. Another outfield catch, this one by Al Gianfrido in the 1947 series on a ball hit by Joe DiMaggio. The year before that, there was Enos Slaughter scoring from first base on a single to win the World Series for St. Louis. The Phillies of 1950, the Whiz Kids, winning the pennant on a home run by Dick Sisler and the pitching of Robin Roberts and a kiss to go with it. In 1938, player-manager Gabby Hartnett drives the Cubs toward a pennant with his famous home run in the gloaming. Another home run, this one in 1960, as Bill Mazeroski wins the World Series for Pittsburgh with his homer in the ninth inning of the seventh game, the most dramatic climax in all series history. But for dramatic climax, maybe you begin and end with the ninth inning of the last game of the pennant playoff in 1951. Capping a spectacular comeback against their arch rivals, the Giants beat the Dodgers as Bobby Thompson gets the hit they call the home run heard round the world. And yet the final word in home runs was not here. For in 1935, Babe Ruth became a national leaguer. And as a member of the Braves, he hit the 714th and last home run of his career. And in the sweep of history, 39 years later, it would fall to another member of the Braves, Henry Aaron, to hit the 715th home run of his own career, and thus become the greatest home run hitter in all baseball history. The outfielder climbed the fence to try to get that ball, not because he had any chance of catching it, 
but because the conflict of the generations took command. Now he was not just the man on the field, but the kid in the stands scrambling for the greatest souvenir baseball of all time. The scoreboard had it absolutely right. Move over, babe. Here comes Henry. From the autographs of today to the autographs of four generations ago, housed in that repository of baseball memory, the Hall of Fame at Cooperstown, New York. The young remember and the old renew. A hundred years of the National League and the great American game comes full circle to the apparition of victory over time itself. Oh, what a sport it is. No clock exists to regulate this game. And the scoring is done by the team that doesn't have the ball. Only the names change. These are the saddest of possible words, tinker to evers to chance. The players of today are the players always. Rogers Bresnahan, Rabbit Moranville, Rube Marquard, Frankie Frisch, Paul Wainer, Warren Spahn, Roy Campanella, Casey Stingle, Ernie Banks. The voices echo in a wind tunnel of time. Hit them where they ain't. Nice guys finish last. Slide, Kelly, slide. Wait till next year. I never called one wrong in my heart. Dave Bancroft, Jim Bottomley, Three Finger Brown, Fred Clark, Hugh Duffy, Iron Man McGillity, Ducky Medwick, Bill Terry, Dazzy Vance, Pie Trainer, Kid Nichols, Hoss Radburn, Ed Delahanty, George Wright, who played for the original Cincinnati Red Stockings and for Boston and for Providence. The fan who sees the image of today cannot help but see the image of yesterday. Even more than that, he sees the image of himself. Time is of the essence. The crowd and the players are the same age always. So wrote the poet Ralph Humphreys. The French historian Jacques Barzin put it another way. Whoever wants to know the heart and mind of America, he said, had better learn baseball. many things to many people. From his secret loft, the organist provides the music. And even the ushers dance. Others dance with him. A pirate in Pittsburgh. A brave in Atlanta. Get your programs here. Scorecard and line up. A hot dog! Hot dog! The 
game of souvenirs and a sense uniquely American of sharing the fun. On the field, always the action. On the bench, the tension, the concentration. The dugouts of yesterday are the dugouts of today. The crowds of yesterday are the crowds of today. And sometimes it's the fielder in the stands who makes the catch. And the mists of time bring the pitcher to the mound. From the Iron Men of old to the relief specialist arriving on his mission to save the game. And the names, always the names. Lusensky, Parker, Garvey, Raboski, Stargell. And the names of the present will in their turn give way to the names of the future. The centennial of the National League and the best of all birthday celebrations. For what it celebrates most of all today is tomorrow. <laughs>